Well, 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 hello and good evening, everyone. Um, before I say a single word or talk about the word for this uh, installment of Hot Second Hebrew, I have to uh, send out a super big shout out to Elder Remy Elona and the Igbo people of Nigeria in West Africa. Ututu Umma, everybody. Um, congratulations, Mazaltov Usimantov, uh, to you for finally, finally being recognized for the obvious that you are indeed children of Jacob, children of Jacob. Um, I do believe uh, that in this decision uh, handed down that there are more pros than there could ever be cons uh, to come out of this situation. Um, and I think it is only the, uh, the beginning of the floodgates opening uh, because the scattered uh, are being regathered, all right? Uh, and it will be for the healing of, 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 of the world. I really do believe that. I do believe that. So, Mazal Tov u Siman Tov to the Igbo people of uh, West Africa. So, Uvechol Zot, Shalom, shalom lachem anashim tovim uvruchim habaim la rutsakatan sheli halayla. Tonight, because, yeah, it's 8.46 p.m. Uh, old guy like me should be asleep. Um, <laughs> tonight, I want to talk to you about the curious case of the Hebrew word chesed. Chesed. The curious case of the Hebrew word Chesed. Now, with the word Chesed, we have a, a nice smorgasbord or variety of colorful uh, translations. Okay, you should be familiar with this word. In a lot of cases, it's translated as loving kindness, tender loving kindness. Um, uh, sometimes trans sometimes translated as love, and and other times it's sometimes translated as grace. But what is it really? Well, I can tell you a couple things about uh, this word right off top. That I can read certain passages from the Bible, and you would be like, yes, yes, and amen. I want that. I need that. There are a couple of places where I can read where you'll be like, no, I want nothing to do with that. But how could that be? Well, that's why we're here. That's why I do uh, segments like Hot Second Hebrew, so that I can uh, help to paint the fuller picture and uh, help uh, to illuminate um, the dual and sometimes, you know, just multiple meanings of a single Hebrew word. And those translations and or those definitions depend sometimes on who the word is describing. And that is the case today. I'll give you a couple of examples. From Tehillim 136 or Psalm 136. A little screenshot here. So, from Tehillim 136, it's a very famous, right? It starts off, Hodu. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Because forever is his mercy. Chesed in this sense, okay, but chasdo means his mercy. The O ending there will have a cholem vav at the end. Okay, his mercy uh, endures forever. And you know, the chapter goes on, gives a lot of colorful stuff. Let me read you a couple more, all right? Uh, like for example, it says, "Hodu uh, lelohe ha Elohim." Give thanks to the God of gods, or to the supreme power of all supreme powers. Ki lelam chesdo leose niflaot gedolot levado, who does great wonders all by himself. Why ki lelam chesdo? Because forever his is chesed. Now this chapter will. Translated always as mercy. His mercy endures forever. A couple more. Le'ose ha'shamayim bitvuna. Le'ose ha'shamayim bitvuna. And he is the one who 
created the heavens with understanding. Ki le'olam chazdo, leroka ha'aretz al ha'mayim. He spread out the land over the water. Ki le'olam chazdo. Le'ose orim gedolim, who makes the great lights. Ki le'olam chazdo. And finally, et ha'shemesh le'memshelet ha'yom, the sun to rule by day, the sun to rule by day, the moon and the stars to rule by night. Why? Because his mercy endures forever. So, okay, good translation, David. I think the Bible nailed it. The Bible got it right. Uh, mercy. Hmm. Well, there are a couple of places that have a bit of a different rendering. Genesis 32, 11, for example. I'll just read that really quick here, here in the English Bible. Genesis 32, 11. This is when uh, Yaakov is on his way to meet Esav, and he's pretty sure that this dude going to kill me, right? Uh, and he's praying to the Most High. And in verse 10, it says here in the English, it says, I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies. Mercies and of all of the truth that you have shown me. In Hebrew, he says, Katonti, I am diminished. Katonti mikol hachasadim. Katonti mikol hachasadim. Chesed in the singular, chasadim in the plural. So he's saying, Yaakov is saying to the Most High, to Hashem, he's saying, Katonti, I am diminished. Mikol hachasadim vekol haemet asher asita et Adonai. I am diminished from all of the mercies and loving kindness and truth that you have shown to your servant. He goes on to say, uh, Now I have split myself into two camps, okay, and I'm crossing the Jordan only with this stick in my hand. Save me, please, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau. So, Tender loving kindness and grace are a couple. Okay. Uh, one more verse here uh, before I get to the one that makes you go, because uh, see, I made you say hallelujah so far. Oh, how humble Yaakov was to to uh, to ask for help, but to to be grateful and, and, and to, to say how humbled he is by the tender loving kindness of the Most High. Yes, you know, so right now you're hallelujah and you're saying yes, yes. All right, uh, Jeremiah chapter 30, 31, verse 3. Jeremiah 31, 3 reads as follows. Um, the Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn you. With loving kindness have I drawn you. The hallelujah stops right now, okay? Because you have an idea. All of the uh, um, translations of chesed you've heard so far have been positive and shout-worthy. You know, for some of you who come from a charismatic background, all you need is a little organ with a little Leslie, a little bass guitar, and you'd be huckabucking and cutting the rug. Well, let me break your dance. Let me break your dance in half right here. Because I'm going to read to you from Leviticus chapter 20, verse 17. And the only reason why, you guys, again, there are discoveries. Every, every time uh, we roll through the Torah scroll, every time we roll through the Torah during the cycle of the year, and you read through in Hebrew, you always run across something that makes you say, whoa, wait, and you have to figure it out. You have to, you know, you have to wash it, I guess, uh, is the term that I'm looking for. Well, here we are. Vaikra, Vaikra in Leviticus. Vaikra, chapter 20, verse 17. It says, Ve'ish asher yikach et achoto, and a man, whoever he is, who will take his sister, bat aviv o vat imo whether it's the daughter of his father or the daughter of his mother. 
וראה את ערוותה, and he looks upon her nakedness, והיא מראה את ערוותו, and she sees his nakedness, חסד הוא. It is a chesed to them? Wait a minute. If a man, whoever he is, will take his sister, whether it's the daughter of his mother or the daughter of his father, and he sees her, uncovers her nakedness, and she uncovers and sees his, it is a chesed? It is a mercy to them? It is a tender, loving kindness? What in the world has just happened here? Well, I can tell you this. I'll read you the English rendering of how they translated the word chesed. I know how it translates, but I want you to hear it straight from the book. Exodus, Exodus, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 17 says, And if a man shall take his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, and see her nakedness, and she see his nakedness, it is a wicked thing. It is a wicked thing, and they shall be cut off and put to death, cut off from the people. How in the world do we wash this? This is the same question. Don't feel bad that I had to ask myself. And I pondered it for about a year. Pondered it for about a year and scoured through finding all of the instances where the word chesed is used. How could a word so beautiful, how could a word so benevolent be used positive in 99% of the cases? But it's not only negative in one case, it's downright perverse. Downright perverse. Well, um, before I get to that, I will tell you uh, one other thing, there are beautiful pieces of liturgy, and that's what compo compounds it even more for someone like me. I know, you know, I'm very familiar with all the liturgy that's done in a typical Shabbat service in the greater Torah-keeping world. So you have things like uh, the Sim Shalom, the Sim Shalom Tova Uvracha, Chen Vechesed Uvrachamin, okay? Um... Okay, uh, Rabbi Nachman. Rabbi Nachman has this statement, and he says this. Write this here. So he says, Al Shlosha Dvarim. Rabbi Nachman has this statement. He says, Al Shlosha, or I'm sorry, Al Shlosha, I kind of look at this backwards. It's, it's weird looking at it in the phone. Al Shlosha Dvarim Ha'ulam Omed. On three matters or on three things, the whole world stands. Al Shlosha Dvarim Ha'ulam Omed. And what are those three things? What are those three things? Al HaTorah, okay, the world stands or is held up by the Torah. Al HaAvodah, on the worship or your service to the Most High. The Al Gimilut Chasadim. Chesed singular, Chasadim. Al Gimilut Chasadim, on acts of tender loving mercy, on random acts of kindness, acts of tender loving mercy. So is it possible that he could be saying, okay, al shlosha devarim, haolam omed, al torah, al havoda, and on acts of perversion? No. Okay, no, that's not obviously what he is saying. Here is what I came up with or how I wash this. Okay, so I mentioned Jeremiah, Jeremiah 31, 3. Jeremiah 31, 3, Genesis 32, 11, and Leviticus 20 and uh, 17. Now, positive references all throughout Psalm 136, of course, where the word is used over and over again in the masculine, 
possessive form. Ki le olam chasdo, because his mercy, because his loving kindness, or because his charity, uh, because his mercy endures forever. And in the instance where this same word is used and it's perverse and negative, if you put them in two separate columns, you'll find that when the word chesed is used with respect to the Most High, the creator of the universe, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed be He, to Hashem, to Yahuwah, when the word is used referencing Him, it's tender loving kindness, it's mercy, it's charity, it's love, it's all of these benevolent things. But when it is applied to man, when it is describing the acts of a man, it is Torevit, it is uh, abominable. What could that be? How do we explain this? Well, a little paleo before we take it home. A little paleo. Think of it along these lines to give the word chesed a little bit more meaning in the positive sense. So you have the letter chet. Okay? And the letter chet, of course you know it's the eighth letter of the alphabet. It is a fence or a partition. A fence or a partition. Okay? Then we have the letter Samech. The letter Samech. The letter Samech uh, has, carries a connotation of surrounding proximity, uh, a thorn, a thorn thistles, or protection. You remember in some of the other videos we talked about the fact that shepherds would surround their sheep with dar, dardar or dardarim, which were a bunch of thorns and thistles. Uh, big thorny thorn bushes, and that way they could keep watch over them um, at night once they've stopped for the night and they can't move any further. Also, the wilderness of Sin, spelled with a Samech, Yod and Anon, the wilderness of Sin, um, it's a wilderness of thorns and thistles, okay? And the bush, which was called a Sne, spelled with a Samech, Nun and a He, which uh, the Most High spoke from when he revealed himself uh, and spoke to Moshe for that very first time from the inside of a flame that was inside of a sne that would not catch fire. So a hedge or a wall of protection. And then finally, Dalit. Dalit is the final letter. And of course we know Dalit is a door. Dalit is a door, okay? so. A dividing wall, a protection, okay, and there is a door in which this protection can be entered into. Now, have this thought in mind. The creator of the universe, he is holy, he is righteous, he is set apart, he is unique. There is none. There is none like unto him, and there is none like unto his deeds, uh, unto his works. Everything that proceeds forth from him, whether it be from the inner heart of who he is, or from the words of his mouth, they are all pure. They are they are all clean. They are all holy, and they are all just. Rachum lechanun v'tzadik. He is upright, righteous, um, and he is holy, and he is merciful. Now, on the other hand, his creation, okay, his crown jewel of creation, man, on the other hand, fallen man is not pure. Fallen man is not pure by any stretch of, ima of imagination. Fallen man is ne in need of regeneration, okay, and um, that gap or that void that was created between the Most High and His creation, between heaven and between earth as a result of the fall of Adam, okay, that void um, took us out of the proximity of the Most High. And therefore, until we are regenerated, everything that comes from the inner heart of a man or from the mouth of a man who is not regenerated is the exact opposite of what comes from his pure creator. So chesed from the Most High is one thing, vastly different 
as far as the east is from the west, the north from the south. Chesed from his fallen creation is something else vastly different, dark, wicked, devilish, and evil. This is why Yeshua says that the thoughts of a man's heart are wicked constantly. They're wicked constantly um, and desperately wicked, okay, and deceitful above all things. So what's the difference between the chesed, the good form, because we don't need to talk about the negative part anymore. What's the difference between the forms of chesed? So if you think of chesed along the lines of mercy or grace, grace gives from grace gives from a place of shefa, having more than enough, having more than enough. Grace just gives from that place. Okay, but the chesed that is the tender loving kindness, okay, that is merciful, that dogged love that pursues you and won't let you go, okay, regardless of if you deserve to be uh, dropped and, and, and thrown away without a second look, that stubborn love, that stubborn love, it gives from a place of perpetual need. A perpetual need. When you and I realize how uh, far uh, that we fall, how far short that we fall, and how we are desperately in need um, of a Savior, how desperately we are in need uh, of Abba, okay, it's from that place that the chesed, the loving, tender kindness of the Most High, that's where it gives from, uh, from that place. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So at any rate, I hope uh, that this was constructive. I hope that this was <clears throat> helpful, informative. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, pushback, agreement, whatever. Um, I always love hearing from uh, uh, the wonderful people who uh, give me uh, of their time. Uh, take the time to listen to me ramble on and on. Okay. So with that, uh, everybody, chesed. The chesed from the Most High uh, is the chesed that we seek. Um, and that chesed uh, that he gives, gives from a place of, 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 of anticipating the need. Where there is need and where there is pure need, that loving kindness is waiting uh, and standing there waiting to uh, respond. So with that, I will wish you all uh, good night. Yivarechecha. Adonai ve'yishmar echa ya'er, Adonai panav elecha, v'yichunecha yisar Adonai, panav elecha ve'yisim lecha, shalom.